disasters already. Too many retreats. They invade our space, and we fall back. I mean, that's what I brought up. Den of Geek. Why we have to embrace change. Rings of Power. Trailer show how damaged the culture has gone. Who are you to, uh, to say that the fandom is damaged? Same kind of who said the Star Wars fandom was damaged because we rejected the destruction of our beloved characters and our beloved worlds. You have no right to stand on high after you've taken your 30 pieces of silver and tell us we aren't the fans, that we're the one damaging things. We're not the one calling anybody names. We're simply going, hey, look, this isn't kosher. What you're doing doesn't line up with the spirit and the faith, faith of insert franchise. And there's a list. I'm not even going to say there's a very long list now. Lord of the Rings is just the latest one. The Lord of the Rings is the one that has been the step too far. Lord of the Rings has that fan base. We've talked about this before. You guys have, you guys have uh, said it to me, and I've echoed your sentiment, and I've rephrased it my way. Lord of the Rings is the it, next to like Doctor Who in terms of age. It's like one of the original fan bases when it comes to fa fantasy and science fiction. Fantasy end here, science fiction end is Doctor Who. They're, they are the original fan bases because they're the oldest. Tolkien, part of the foundation of everything I do in my life when it comes to creating fantasy. Without him, I don't think it would be here. Peter Jackson made movies in the faith and the spirit of Tolkien's books. Yes, he made changes, but even the most diehard fans like Gary from Erotic, Just Some Guy, they say, hey, this was still done in faith, these slight changes, never a perfect adaptation, but it's as close as they could possibly get it, and it works, and we love it, and we thank you for it. We, we don't go out and attack. We simply point out saying, please, please be respectful, not only to the franchise and the lore and the source material, but then be respectful for us when we're saying, please give us what we want. We want to be, we want to be fans of all this stuff. We want, we want to be into this. We don't want to be angry about any of this stuff. We want to be excited for these shows. But when you attack us out of the gate, like Amazon has done, when they had all these pieces ready to go to shoot us down, to say you're the toxic ones, you're the ones damaging, like like that, like Den of Geek said, you were the ones damaging the culture. Then you're spitting in our eye. And we have no reason to, to, to say, okay, fine, we'll give you a chance. I mean, how many times when Wheel of Time started, when those of us who were adamant saying, red flags, red flags, this is going to be bad, please listen to us. How many times before I was proven right, as were many others, how many times say, oh, we have to sit back, we have to let it play out, we have to see how it goes, have to see what it does. When there were red flags all over the place. When there are red flags, you cannot say, let's wait and see. You must say, I'm going into this with, with, with a heavy critical eye. Perfect example. When Bab when the, if, the, if the Babylon 5 reboot ever does get put on the slate, I'm going into that with a very critical eye. It's not a wait and see anymore. Things have gone too far to wait and see. You, Disney Lucasfilm, Disney Star Wars doesn't get a wait and see. It gets an immediate double barrel. MCU doesn't get a wait and see. It gets a single barrel because I'm a little apathetic at this point. And MCU ended with Endgame. But Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings came before it, before all of it, and for over 60 years. Well, okay, I'm sorry, for over 40 years, because it's been 20 years since the movies now. For over 40 years, all people had were the books. All they had were the books and their love for the books 
and sharing that love with each other. And when they found somebody who hadn't read it saying, dude, you got to read this. It's awesome. So when you go to them and you tell them, we're going to change what has been set in stone for decades. Because as the Vanity Fair piece showed us, said in their, their own words, we're going to tell the stories that Tolkien wasn't able to read between the lines. We're going to do it better than Tolkien because we think we're better. And our narrative and message has to be put out there. And Lord of the Rings is the new perfect vehicle for that. <sighs> When you go after something that that has that kind of devotion and that kind of solid, rock solid love, which was only made greater by Peter Jackson's movies, you don't get a wait and see. You get immediate backlash. And then the backlash gets a naturally rolled 20, 10, 20 double damage, and then I'll roll a D4, and I'll land a four and get triple damage. Because then you go out and insult the people who love it. Amazon's dumb. They're dumb. They didn't read the room. They believed their own hype. They believed their own farts were rose-smelling awesomeness I lost, I lost a good i lost the word there <laughs> excuse me for that it just left me right as i was going on with it but you get what i'm saying they they believe their own everything they believed what twitter is telling them that we're the problem so here we are here we are three weeks in now and it's on fire they had to unlist that fake fan thing because they now what's Amazon gonna do? Are they, I, I, are they retreating a bit? Yes. But are they in full retreat? No, because they are contractually committed to this for five seasons. That's probably at least 50 episodes. They may, they may shave off of an episode here and there, cut it down to eight going forward, but that there, there's five years and yeah, we're going to get content out of this. So Amazon, they effed up. They effed up, and this is going to have repercussions. It's going to have repercussions on everything going forward. Because what is left after Lord of the Rings? Nothing. What what franchises are left to be destroyed? I mean, there are some, but that's the that's the last grand one. And the fight, to quote Picard from First Contact, the line must be drawn here, no further. I will make them pay for what they've done. No further. They get no farther here. We stop them at Lord of the Rings. We stop them. We push back. And we tell them what you've done doesn't count. It literally is billion dollar fan fiction because you don't even have, you don't even have the rights to the similar, similar Rillian. Silmarillion and the history and the extra stuff. We, they're quoted on it. I showed you in the video this week already. They don't have the rights to anything of the second age. They're making it up. So we push back and say, no, what you're doing isn't real. Then we pick up our banner. We pick up our flags. We rally to each other. We form fresh armies, fresh units, and we continue the march. Then we say, no. No, Disney Star Wars, you don't get to tell us that what you're putting out is the canon. We are the fans, the lifeblood of everything. We are the ones who choose, who spend the money. Nobody's buying your crap. People are buying EU. So no, we take back Star Wars. We collect, protect, and preserve. Don't buy the merch. Then we move on and tell them no with Star Trek. We take back the ground they have conquered. They've conquered it. We take it back. We reconquer it. We take back Doctor Who, although we, we have to see what Russell T. Davies does with that. Maybe a miracle will happen and he'll eliminate the timeless child. If he doesn't, I don't know what to say about Doctor Who. 
I mean, Russell, Russell T. Davies was the man who, re, who re, reinvented it, reinvigorated it for a modern audience and did a fantastic job. So if he doesn't erase Jody time, the Whitaker era, then I don't know what to do for Doctor Who. I don't know how to, how to fight that battle. I don't. Because if one of the people that made it great again makes it even worse, then what do you do? I don't know. We don't let them get away with the continued desecration of Wheel of Time. We make the videos. We review it. We push it. We tell them, no, you're full of crap. You don't get to tell your fan fiction and get away with it. You see, we fight back, we push back, we retake what was lost, and then we close the gates. And we gatekeep the hell out of it. At the same time, we make our own. Howdy, y'all. The first chapter of my fantasy novel, Guardian of Innocence, is now available for free. Click the link in the description below and join me in an old-school good versus evil story where Cole Larrys, a disillusioned mercenary, suddenly finds himself dropped into the middle of a destiny he never asked for as the protector of Jania Sarai, a blacksmith's daughter who may hold the answers to finally stopping a millennia-old threat to the world of Rosetta. Cole's perceptions of love, family, trust, loyalty, as well as his very beliefs in fate versus free will shall be tested as he struggles to keep Jania safe from the minions of the dreaded Zabor Tal, former champion of the gods and now ruler of the long-forgotten Yis Empire. Click the link below, enjoy the first chapter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and help it grow so that I can bring you the full story in the near future. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I don't do Facebook. I will never do Twitter. If you want to reach out to me, email me at therednerd at gmail.com. I'm on Getter now, at the Red Nerd, the Geeks and Gamers forums under at ROAS, and you can also follow me on Odyssey at the Renaissance Nerd. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.